Hi, this is Matt. I'm a second year med student and uh, we'll be covering glaucoma, specifically sort of the farm application of treating glaucoma. What drugs to use, where they work, why they work the way they do. So, um, if you've been following along on all of our autonomics nervous system lectures, then you'll remember this drawing from the, <clears throat> the first one, my, my cheat sheet to remembering which receptors do what in the eye. You've got the um, alpha there, kind of representing the, the iris, um, and it's going to dilate. Um, you've got, uh, you also have the alpha, I should point out, out here, because that's also vasoconstriction, alpha 1, remember sympathetics. Then we have the beta, which is located, like, it's, it's like, it's around my eyes here. That's the B for beta, because uh, that's the ciliary body, uh, ciliary muscles, and the, you know, the ciliary muscles surround the lens, so that, that aspect. And um, and also the B here, trying to represent like a little tear thing or something, get you to think about you know what it makes. It's making the fluid, it's making the aqueous humor, um, and so it, it's got, it relaxes the ciliary muscle and it uh, stimulates aqueous production. And the reason why that happens to think about, remember, is that sympathetics Right, are going to want to dilate your eyes. This is the running away from the lion thing. And if the eyes are dilated, the pupils dilated because of alpha, um, we want the the zonule fibers, which um, over here is like the diagram that's on 438 in first day. This is like my mock-up of it. So um, if this is the iris and uh, this is the zonule fibers and this is my ciliary body here. So we want the fibers taut. Um, the zonal fibers toss so that the lens is spread out, so that if it flattens the lens, then, then uh, objects that are farther away won't get um, refracted at such won't get refracted at such an acute angle, such that it doesn't focus in front of the retina, far away objects, but they focus on the retina. So to do that, um, it needs to keep the lens uh, pulled, which means the zonal fibers have to be taut, which means the ciliary body con or ciliary muscle uh, counterintuitively though needs to be um, relaxed. And it's not really that counterintuitive if you think about the idea that it's, it's surrounding, the, um, it's surrounding the, the lens, right? So when it, when it relaxes, it's kind of pulling back, but when, it cons when it cons and it's pulling on the fibers, but when it constricts, now those fibers can move in and relax the fibers. And what receptors are responsible for that? Well, that was our M3 receptors, which are represented by the two Ms kind of pulling on the lens there to represent they are like the zonal fibers. And then my M up here, which is on either side of my iris there, and it's going to squeeze it. It's going to squeeze the pupil. It's a pupil constrictor. So and it's really nice that uh, Mother Nature and Science got together and made it alpha 1, beta 2, M3 for uh, keeping them all together, who works where. So that's what works on the eyes. So if we know we have that and we have glaucoma, which is increased ocular pressure, and there's two kinds of glaucoma, open angled and closed or also called narrow angled glaucoma. And uh, the key there, uh, the pathophysiology of open glaucoma is not that well understood, but it just imagine open is just a, a slow progressive pathophysiology of increased uh, aqueous fluid. So um, how could we treat that? We just basically want to knock down uh, aqueous humor production. So um, there's a couple ways we can do it. We could um, constrict our alpha, and we do that with epinephrine, right? Constrict the uh, alpha there. That'll shut down the, the gland, the ciliary body that's going to make aqueous humor by cutting off its blood supply. So um, that will reduce uh, the aqueous humor production. Or we can use a um, we can use a beta two blocker, which we do in the form of timolol. Taxolol and uh, carpal carpal um, I'm looking at page uh, 449 in first aid for that, uh, and it's uh, yeah uh, sorry car cardiolol cardiolol, and um, so those are beta blockers right so that blocks beta two which would um, block and you say well hold on I just did the uh, sympathetic lecture not too long ago so remember timolol right was trying to be a, a beta one non-selective blocker but it failed and it became a non-selective, so it's a beta-1 and beta-2 blocker. And um, what's kind of counterintuitive is batexolol is on here, and batexolol, and that, remember that's part of that uh, abeam mnemonic, 
for beta 1 blockers. Remember, it's not truly only beta 1, it's just beta 1 dominant. So even that beta 2 activity can be used to block this beta 2. And then uh, cardiolol wasn't in that setting, so just it's a cardiolol, uh, it's a beta blocker. There you go. Um, that clears that up there. And then uh, what else can we uh, use to, to treat it? So, so all of that's uh, aqueous tumor uh, shutdown. Uh, o open angle and um, what are some of the other drugs so there's a um, there's something called bromonidine bromonidine interesting name bromonidine bromonidine sounds like clonidine almost clonidine bromonidine bromonidine is an alpha 2 uh, agonist um, alpha 2 agonist bromonidine clonidine but why is it being used now bromonidine it starts with a B so could it be that we're using the alpha-2 stimulus to shut down beta-2? Uh, and, that's, and that's sort of how I think about it. It's shutting down its brother. If you may, Way back when we talked about receptors, I said alpha-2 and beta-2 are always in, like, and they're antagonizing. So here's a situation where we're going to use alpha-2 to antagonize beta-2, and we're stimulating it with bromonidine, which is like clonidine. So bromonidine, it's for going against the beta-2 in the eye, bromonidine. It's going after its brother receptor there, bromonidine. And then uh, what are some of the other drugs? So that's, that's uh, so let's see, let's, let's, use the, let's do the colono, uh, mimetic. So direct, you, we talked about uh, pilocarpine, um, pilocarpine and, and carbacol. So remember I used, I said carbs, carbacol, glaucoma, uh, sugars, carbacol, and then pilocarpine being the emergency one because it's a lot stronger. And then for the indirects, you got the physostigmine. Well, that should make sense. We talked about it. physostigmine goes everywhere. It goes after atropine, right? Atropine worked on the eye. Physostigmine goes after the eye. So that can be used um, to, uh, to treat uh, glaucoma. Now, how would that work? Uh, how would uh, muscarinic uh, receptor work? Well, um, if, it, if, it, uh, if it can constrict the pupil, then um, that will, you know what, huh? <laughs> sorry guys, I probably should talk about the other glaucoma right now because I just realized this is, this is going to get a little too confusing. So we talked about open glaucoma, right? Too much production. Closed angle, if we look at uh, ooh, uh, this angle right here, closed angle, this is the angle, angle, uh, there's the Schlem canal here, this trabecular network, this is where the humor drains, right? It's made in like the ciliary body area, goes out the pupil, comes out around, gets drained here and gets drained out. So if this gets clogged up, then you'll have a backup of uh, the aqueous humor, right? So um, in closed angle, this gets like compressed by the iris when the iris is dilated. Um, that's like an emergency, like someone dilated their eyes, they're gonna feel an acute pain. Open angle was that slow progression of aqueous humor. Things that happen slowly in the body don't present with pain usually. And the idea that like, unless it's directly hurting something but otherwise it's like that pressure over time people don't feel it in their eye they're just they lose peripheral vision but clo closed glaucoma right the closed angle it's gonna be more acute it's gonna be painful uh, the pressure builds up more quickly so um, if the iris is blocking that off then we want to try and constrict that but also the um, muscarinic receptors remember pull on the zonule fibers and what would that do well uh, sorry, it doesn't pull, it will pull, the zonule fibers uh, collapse. Why? Because muscarinic 3 is a ciliary muscle constrictor, right? So when it constricts, that relaxes the zonule fibers. That's great for accommodation. That's wonderful. But the key thing there, though, is that when that muscles pull, they actually pull on this trabecular meshwork, and they apply kind of, I think it was like a traction. They open up the, the tunnels a bit. They open up the channels, so you can actually drain more. So there's like a, some sort of traction applied when the ciliary muscles constrict, that opens up the trabecular network. So in a um, in a open angle, it's more that muscarinic receptor opening up the mesh work that's important. And in a closed angle, it, that's important, but it's also helping constrict the pupil because that was physically closing off that that angle. And so um, if you just stop and say, think about it for a second, then then the uh, that epinephrine that we could have given for open angle is not going to work in closed angle, and it's because if, if you gave epinephrine, right, yes, that's great that it's going to close off the aqueous humor, but it's going to also dilate the eye. And the dilation of the eye is going to close off the angle, which would further worsen a closed angle glaucoma. So 
Uh, for all these ones that we're going to talk about, um, if you'll notice on the sheet, it basically is that any drug will work fine for any of the types of glaucoma except epinephrine. You cannot give epinephrine for a closed angle. That's the big takeaway. All the other ones, well, I think, will kind of, they say, will work for, um, for, for, uh, for any of the uh, glaucoma is what the principle of they basically are shutting down, either shutting down aqueous human production or they're opening up the trabecular network. So, uh, okay, so that was that. Sorry for that tangent there. Um, now, di uh, so, okay, so we talked about sympathetic management, cholinergic management, Oh, I, for, I, meant, I forgot to mention one other indirect that they, they throw in there. So if you have physostigmine, the other drug is echothiophate or whatever. So I just think of echoing the phys. Echothiophate, echoing the phys, it's echoing the physostigmine. It's copying it, it's repeating it. It's echo the thioph, uh, echo thioph, echo thiophate, echoing the physostigmine. So... That's that, and uh, as it mentions, right, it's the pilocarpin in emergencies. And, uh, okay, so that's that. All right, so now, uh, now there's just a couple other drugs to keep in mind that you can use for glaucoma. So there's acetazolamide, which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, and uh, that enzyme is used to help produce aqueous humor, and if you think about where else, uh, the organ system, you talked about carbonic anhydrase, you talked about it in the kidney, and remember, it's used to help generate, uh, kick out an acid into the into the urine, um, and and recover a bicarb and all that jazz. So if you think about it, the way I kind of remember is that aqueous humor. What's humorous about it? Well, it's the same enzyme that's used to make pee is used to make, you know, your eye, <laughs> your eye fluid. So it's kind of like having pee in your eye. So an acetazolamide uh, helps the glaucoma. It will stop aqueous humor production. And then the last one is uh, this prostaglandin, latanoprost, and um, latanoprost. It's got a it's got a weird name, a hard name. Uh, it's easy to remember the side effect though, right? Tan, uh, tan. It's got uh, darkens the iris, so tanning of the iris, and it works on prostaglandin F. So the way to think about that is like I think I want to get the F out of here and go get a tan, uh, latanoprost, <laughs> and um, uh, sorry, latanoprost, and uh, you know, it's, I think, like tanning, it's color, the eye, iris, maybe, I, I you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy one, but if we think of uh, prost uh, prostaglandin, uh, decreasing it, uh, de it decreases aqueous humor, I'm not exactly sure the mechanism, but all of these, right, somehow it's got to, uh, de all of them decrease the aqueous humor, um, in one way or the other, with the exception of the uh, acetylcholine drugs, because those ones are really more about controlling the outflow tract. But even even our epinephrine was really shutting, vasoconstricting the gland. So all of them decreased aqueous humor, except for our um, except for our muscarinic antagonists, or, or sorry, muscarinic uh, muscarinic. Uh, Agonists there are, are uh, direct agonists or are acetylcholinesterase, in, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, and that's represented in the drawing there. So uh, I think that's it. Brief rundown of glaucoma farm, um, and uh, hopefully you've been following along since the beginning. And I' afraid to say this, but I think that was autonomic nervous system. So um, there we go. Uh, Thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking through it. And, uh, oh, 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 shoot. Okay, forgot one thing. As I drew this on down here. What's the mechanism in diabetes uh, for the glaucoma? What's a contributing mechanism? So uh, diabetes, uh, since that's one of the most, the disease, pre disease, predisposed disease state that's most associated with glaucoma, right? So uh, too much glucose, okay? Glucose in a cell undergoes aldose reductase to sorbitol. And sorbitol is just like any other sugar, it has an osmotic uh, effect, okay? So the problem is though, so, so cells have a way of dealing with sorbitol through sorbitol dehydrogenase and it goes to fructose. And if you follow glycolysis, you know where fructose would fit into all of that, right? So fructose is fine, but the sorbitol is what, what, is what can build up. And 
Wouldn't you know, there are three, t in, 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 in diabetes, too much sugar could dump into the sorbitol pathway, right? So wouldn't you know there are three tissues that just so happen to not have a lot of sorbitol dehydrogenase naturally in them. And if you're thinking about where you get the microangiopathy in diabetes, you could infer what these three tissues are. They are the retina, they are the kidney, and they are the Schwann cells. And what do we think about in microangiopathic, in microangiopathic di uh, diabetic uh, disease? We think about uh, neuropathy, uh, nephropathy, and retinopathy. And lo and behold, those three tissues don't have sorbitol dehydrogenase, and they build up sorbitol. And that reaction is on page 105 in the 2013 edition of First Aid, if you want to look at it. it talks about that a little bit more. But just kind of bringing in the biochem to these guys. We talked about how the autonomics, how you how treating that now helps the eye. And I think the big takeaway again was uh, all of them decrease aqueous humor production except for the colonomimetics things or, or acetylcholinesterase inhibitors and that you can't use epinephrine in closed angle because that dilation of the pupil will further worsen the closed angle. So uh, I think that's it. And uh, thank you for sticking through this again. Sorry, now we're done. Thank you for sticking through all this. That was a lot. And I hope, as always, that it helped.